This presentation provides the overview to a complementary solution for telemedicine, with multilingual, electronic medical record, and interface to artificial intelligence for COVID-19 pattern detection and breast cancer diagnostics. All as components of a comprehensive medical information system, with included GPS tracking, to be usable as an early warning system for pandemic signals. Limitless violence Unpredictable events, dangerous transport infrastructure, are problems which are a course in many countries and require smart solutions. Distance support in the health sector in such countries is not limited only to the medical services, but also includes the technical services for health facilities. The use of artificial intelligence for diagnostic support can be of great help to reduce problems from the shortage of specialists, which is a typical problem in developing countries. In the big cities and mayor medical centers there are usually already not enough specialists to meet the demand. If through telemedicine, the peripheral health facilities in rural areas use modern solutions for medical case presentations, it increases the number of cases for expert review from the rural periphery. As much as this is a desirable effect, it can easily bring the risk to overload the low number of experts in the central medical facilities. In cooperation with internationally renowned universities a step for a solution for this problem can be to connect the primary, secondary and tertiary health sector of a country to portals with trained artificial intelligence algorithms to support diagnostics with a very short response time through AI with the capacity to detect patterns of diseases on images on specific medical questions. This can support the second opinion concept of telemedicine and remove the bottleneck from overloaded human experts. Despite all the excitement around COVID-19, latest since SARS in 2002, it was not the question if a pandemic will happen, but when, it will happen next time. Solutions to connect the dots in health information data, to identify early warning signs of pandemics have been all the years available but neglected. Basically the solution is relatively simple, if one considers the data set with the highest granularity in a health sector is the patient's electronic medical record. The electronic medical records includes the patient data, demographic data, refers to the residence of the patient, displays the reason for visiting a health facility, registers in all detail the vital signs, the symptoms, the diagnosis and the applied medical procedures. An electronic medical record is part of a hospital management information system HMIS or health management information system which provides the bigger picture of a health information system in a country and stores all the medical records of all citizens of the country. Depending on access rights in case of emergency. A doctor in an emergency department may access the electronic medical record of a patient whenever required. Those HMIS data are typically stored on a central server and should have at least a backup in a cloud server. In case the central server of a hospital or ministry fails, a data recovery is then possible. Experience over many years of work in developing countries shows that after some years of service it happens regularly that servers fail to work because of insufficient maintenance or budget allocation and a full data loss of national health data is the consequence. Considering the costs and efforts taken to establish a national HMIS it is a tragedy. To observe how in many countries extensive data sets are lost, or still available, but the operators do not even know the passwords anymore, to access databases. 
It is harmful to a country's population if the top managers at ministerial level have no precise and actual medical data for their decisions. A central cloud server backup would at any time support the retrieval of lost data, but in addition to simple data retrieval it also would allow to scientifically analyze health data in real time, on the cloud server by medical researchers. This can identify abnormal patterns of diseases among populations, or accumulations of health symptoms in regions, in order to give an early warning to a country's health ministry to have a look on some alerting details. As example in the COVID context, in rural areas detailed diagnostic capacities are limited, but patterns of symptoms can be well recorded. In areas where patients reside in close proximity to livestock animals, have pets or there are known pests, primary alerts can be triggered if a specific average level of symptoms per region and time is exceeded and can escalate if the frequency of symptoms rises. This is not limited to infectious diseases only, but includes non-communicable disease equally. When the hospital construction project, financed through the German Development Bank in Mazar e Sharif, started in 2008, one of the initial investigations was to interview physicians of all specialties about their primary concern in services of their field to fine tune priorities. For the field of surgery not surgical war trauma or accidents played the most important part of concern, but, the surgeon's deep worry about doing wrong decisions over the surgical intervention on suspicious breast cancer. Without any diagnostics, a surgeon had to interpret, just on his own visual inspection and interpretation, without any laboratory diagnostic, if, or, if not, to amputate a woman's breast. Knowing the dramatic consequences, surgeons told that it follows them into sleepless nights, not to know if a decision was correct to amputate a breast or to leave a breast, possibly finding the same women a few months later full of metastasis and dying. The director of a big specialized laboratory in Germany was asked for the best possible and most feasible approach to implement an effective diagnostic structure at the hospital in Afghanistan. As she was herself member of a huge telemedicine network, established initially in 1998 by the University of Basel, and now run for 20 years independently and voluntarily, by senior pathologists and surgeons worldwide, a cooperation was initiated, which is still ongoing. More than 12 years later, and more than five years after the last external project financing through German Development Bank KFW and GIZ, this cooperation with the North Afghan Hospital has become more important than ever. What we observe today, as a significant success, is not only the number of cases per year steadily now at a level of more than 2,000 examinations each year but also that since the beginning in 2010, the average age of the women seeking medical diagnostics has decreased from over 45 years, in average to below 25 years today. In the conservative society of northern Afghanistan, we interpret this change as a great success that the necessity and acceptance of medical examinations of this type has been understood in the society as a life-saving measure for women, which are now allowed to seek medical care if there is a suspicion over a lump in their breast. The challenges are everywhere the same. Financial resources are low and the inadequate number of specialists restrict the capacity of most diagnostic centers in hospitals to serve the urgent demand in all developing countries. An international team of IT experts, 
specialized on health informatics, hospital management, experienced in all type of clinical workflows, and medical specialists, decided to cooperate and jointly bring together all their experience from decades of lessons learned in their field of expertise. The cooperation was voluntarily and independently of any specific project, only with the aim to design a solution that covers all aspects of classical medical informatics and be expandable for innovative developments in health informatics. The approach focuses on modular designs, where telemedicine functionality can integrate artificial intelligence as part of an electronic medical record, based on field-tested, robust IT applications. The presented solution started as a pilot for telemedicine with artificial intelligence to differentiate malignant and benign breast cancer cells on a user-friendly intuitive platform and expands now with high pace. The initial prediction interface for breast cancer included an overview of processed images, the visual presentation of probabilities, either benign, or malign, or unclear. Provide space for adding medical expert comments. Support quick image access for upload and review. Present user interface and medical content in different languages, as required. The pre-examination form is a structured template for recording of clinical parameters to define the risk group level of a women to breast cancer. It is integrated to the electronic medical record and is used to allow a prediction of breast cancer risk probability without invasive intervention. The template is easy to use for medical staff with no special training in this field. A questionnaire with 12 questions to be answered yes, or no, or with a value, calculates a prediction of likeliness for malignancy, or non-malignancy, or inflammation in a value, expressed in percent. This tool can help staff in remote locations to provide best advice to visit a higher-level health facility urgently or allow time to wait. In this example a combination of both instruments is presented. On the right side the prediction template, which in this example suggests a probability of breast cancer higher than 60%. On the left side in this example are three screenshot images from a microscope with cytology samples from a fine needle aspiration from a breast lump. Each of the images is uploaded and tested by three different artificial intelligence algorithms. For each of the images all three algorithms, equally, interpreted the cells on the images as malignant. The results are cross-checked by international pathologists for quality control and provide the physician in Afghanistan with the required information to decide for the next steps. This process takes just minutes, and the international expert comment usually is available within a few hours. Sometimes results are not as clear as in the previous example. When a fine needle aspiration is taken, and the slides are prepared, the screenshots might not always present a hot spot and the algorithms might display inconsistent results. The first slide, obviously is interpreted as malignant and the last slide is interpreted as benign. The image in the middle it's unclear because two algorithms suggest malignancy and one algorithm suggests that the cells look benign. In the following slide it will be presented how the human experts ongoingly train the algorithms to better learn to identify malignant cells. All uploaded images can be used to further train the artificial intelligence algorithm. Medical experts 
with administrator rights can open the image and identify and mark cells within the image if they are relevant for the diagnostic conclusion. If within an image a single cell or a number of cells show signs of malignancy or the image was wrongly interpreted by the algorithm, it is possible to train the AI on the correction. With a digital marker the relevant cells are selected and receive an ID. In the related data entry fields the expert can describe the radius of the cell, the texture of the relevant part of the cell, as well as the location of the critical pattern, observed on the cell by the medical specialist. After all relevant cells are marked, and described as marked as malignant or benign, the information will be saved and used for updating and training the artificial intelligence algorithm. Therefore, this is an ongoing system of quality control and further training. The application, where all the presented functions are embedded, is a lifelong electronic medical record system from cradle to grave. From its functional design, it is an open portal, with potential for integrating a wide range of different services. The flexibility, to expand or reduce its user interface tiles, to the services only, as they are provided in a specific health facility, keeps the navigation for the user easy, as it shows only the options which apply in the workplace. Data, which are already content of the electronic medical record from care at other facilities are then available as read-only objects to make sure all information related to a patient is available. As the system is web-based, each patient can access his or her electronic medical record from a smartphone or computer just like an internet banking function. Because the electronic medical record is multilingual, it is also possible that a patient may travel from one country to another, have his or her medical record available, and switch the language, as required when seeking support in a hospital abroad. With the flexible interface, to artificial intelligence algorithms, it is possible to adjust this electronic medical record to any available artificial intelligence algorithm, trained for a wide range of specific diagnostic questions. The examples in the images on this slide refer to examples of early identification of lung cancer and early identification of signs of cerebral hemorrhages from computer tomographic images, where patterns can be identified at pixel level. The analyze of thorax X-ray images was already part of the integration to artificial intelligence algorithms in 2019. The recent dramatic development with the COVID-19 crisis triggered international cooperations between universities worldwide, among them the universities in Toronto and Chinese scientists who have trained an algorithm to identify patterns of COVID-19 from thorax images of patients with symptoms of pneumonia. The training of the algorithm initially based on 17,000 thorax X-ray images of confirmed COVID-19 pneumonia cases, against the same number of images of pneumonia. Old enough to be surely from before the time of COVID-19. The confidential interval of this algorithm is above 90% and it is ongoingly further improved by adding more images and defining location-related specific patterns on a lung image or computer tomography images. While the initial thorax interpretation tool focused on 14 questions on one X-ray, the actual algorithm with focus on COVID-19 answers only three questions. Firstly, if signs of COVID-19 are observed, and at what percentage, or if signs of pneumonia are found, 
at what percentage, or if there is no finding. In cooperation with the University of Vienna at General Hospital Vienna computer tomographic images are used to train artificial intelligence on the detection of COVID-19. It appears that computer tomographic images provide far more details for an effective interpretation. But it is a fact that in many developing countries computer tomographs are not available. While X-ray machines can be found in many clinics of the primary sector. While COVID-19 swap tests might be unavailable or expensive and take up to several days before results are available. Uploading radiology images to artificial intelligence for diagnostic pattern support takes just up to 20 minutes before a result is available at no cost other than the internet access once the initial setup is established. But it must be understood that this works only for patients who already suffer from respiratory problems. This is not a COVID-19 test method on its own. It just provides information if the respiratory problem is more likely a seasonal pneumonia or a COVID-19 pneumonia. On the format of the X-ray image, it does not matter if the X-ray is digital or if it is an analog film, where an image is taken by smartphone. Both works. The accessibility for multiple users, with different types of devices, such as smartphones, tablets, or laptops, with different operating systems is possible because the application has a web-based user interface. Depending on the size and infrastructure of a facility, the applications may run on local servers to have a better performance in the WLAN, but for smaller facilities the core data set of patients and their medical records can be stored on a laptop only, plus smartphone, having a cloud-based storage and backup through internet which can be synchronized at any moment or in predefined intervals. This setup allows flexible adjustments to a wide range of quality and low bandwidth speeds of Internet access. As a multilingual application, the services can be used in remote locations by staff that only speaks its national, even regional, language. It is fully scalable and customizable for any language. As a modular concept, the electronic medical record does not only provide the interface for artificial intelligence and telemedicine, it is also an integrated component of a fully established hospital management information system. This can be activated if required, or the electronic medical records may be used as standalone functions. All applications follow international standards for medical terminology such as LOINC and SNOMED CT, and it allows all management functionalities for a hospital like scheduling of use of operating theatres, planning of admissions of patients, managing all laboratory and radiography examinations. It provides all data required for finance management and performance review. Like the electronic medical record, the hospital management information system is multilingual and can be customized for the needs of every hospital in every language. It is in use in more than 70 hospitals worldwide up to the size of 1,600 bed university hospitals in Europe. Further pushing the logic of the modular expandability and integration of various functions. It is just logical to integrate additional functionality to electronic medical records in support of telemedical user friendliness. A chat function to be started by the user of the electronic medical record with commonly known features like from WhatsApp or Skype and in support of multilingualism. By on the fly translation function supports multilingual exchange between medical staffs around the world as real-time patient support. Each user can select the language of choice, how a message is to be entered, and in what language it shall be displayed and vice versa.
it must be mentioned that such type of real-time translation does not always work perfectly for medical terminology, as it does not always fully apply medical terminology standards. Therefore, dialogues can potentially suffer from weak translation. This must be on the attention for all users. In addition to the multilingual chat support, started from the electronic medical record, it is also possible to start a video conference from this application. This video conference can use the integrated camera of smartphone or tablet as default device, but also allows to connect to other peripheral devices as shown as example in the video of the next slide the AMA, Expert Eye, as a hands-free solution for video conferencing during patient care. Est-ce qu'on fait la technique du pont ah, Il faut obligatoirement la technique du pont. Hein. Que vous faites sortir vers la hanche, quoi, pour que je ne pas en appuyer dessus. Je mettrai une mousse relativement épaisse. D'accord. Can you hear me, Dr. Alicia? Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay, so uh, can you show me a picture of where you'll do the incision? Yes. Le puedo mostrar donde va a ser la incisión, dice. Nos infirmiers qui sont en extra hospitalier pour pouvoir conseiller le cas échéant toute une une vision globale des choses, ce qui nous manquait clairement quand nous étions en lien téléphonique avec eux. It is obvious that quality of medical care is essential, but it is a challenge to document the applied related quality references in medical records sufficiently. Medical services are provided in line with national standards or in absence of national standards with reference to scientifically established international standards or guidelines. Medical staff is obliged to provide services in line with required guidelines. The electronic medical record allows to connect every applied service to a patient with the electronic library guidelines and standards used by the medical staff in charge for the patient. This electronic library is designed and maintained in our approach as bilingual documents with national language and in English. This allows to organize international cooperation with external experts to be more efficient and transparent to support the review the applied guidelines and standards, without need for individual case-by-case -case translation. It is the responsibility of each health facility's quality management to make guidelines and standards available bilingual and regularly review and update them as required. Old Outdated guidelines must be kept in a digital archive to provide required reference to medical practice in the past in case of legal challenges that might occur long time after a treatment is finalized. The image on this slide symbolizes how the electronic medical record refers to a relevant reference document in the electronic library of a hospital in bilingual format. A comprehensive electronic solution in health informatics must comply with all international standards for the electronic exchange of medical data. Such standards are established and ongoingly maintained for the last 25 years. All relevant resources are available as open source. Therefore, the here presented open source application can fully integrate to existing structures of health information systems in any country, on the condition that existing information systems also comply with international standards. This shall prevent monolithic product situations that are not desirable. On the other hand, if in a country or in a hospital a information system does not comply with international standards, the vendor in charge shall be instructed to apply the required correction. 
This is normally possible with reasonable effort. If this is not possible, or a vendor rejects this, the top management at hospital or ministry must consider the full replacement of the non-compatible applications to comply with due diligence demands in quality. In review of the SARS pandemic from 2003, one of the greatest complaints was that researchers could not have access to relevant health data in due time. This could have allowed to identify, at a much earlier stage, when a zoonotic virus moved from animal to human. It turned out that similar symptoms occurred before and after on individuals that could have been life-saving if they could have been identified earlier and asked for blood samples to study antibodies earlier. When looking into existing information systems, for health insurances and schemes for cost reimbursements to health facilities, the electronic medical records if in place and hospital information systems if in place could have provided most of the critical information in time. But even if all information had been in place, they had not been connected in a way that efficient data analyses could have been performed to connect symptoms and locations. Connecting the dots to see the picture failed. Over and over again. The same problem is still there, now, 17 years later, during the COVID-19 crisis. Since then there was bird flu, and MERS, and Ebola. Solutions had been on the table, but instead of acting with force, much was talked without decisive actions, as follow-up. One of the obvious solutions is to connect residents' data from a health insurance management information system which is available as open source, called OpenIMIS and developed with funding from the Swiss government and the German government, with GPS tags and basic information on animals in close proximity. As a tempt of the Millennium Development Goals of Universal Health Coverage, every individual should be registered for health service provision, no matter if own income is generated or not. Everyone should have the right to receive services and if there is no income the costs shall be covered by public funding. If the residential address of each person relates to the GPS coordinates, it is possible to allocate the sum of symptoms from many individuals who seek medical care to a GPS grid, to identify regional abnormalities and hot spots. In remote places, like mountainous villages in Afghanistan, it will be impossible to identify clear address and street numbers. But it is part of the registration process to take the image of any insured person. It is a standard procedure to visit the house of each family for registration, as it is actually common practice. During the registration images are taken for the insurance registration from everyone. They can be GPS tagged with standard smartphones. When claims for services are sent by a health facility for services, the related symptoms can be anonymous linked to GPS locations to identify hot spots on a cloud server where all data are aggregated. Expanding this registration by collecting data about animals like livestock or house pets or pests in proximity of residences, would add only a small number of additional data, which are easy to handle by any database. This does not inflate the volume of data, substantial, but provide information of great value about animal population in close proximity of residences, as early warning for zoonotic events. Registering every individual as part of a health insurance system is a component of the Universal Health Coverage UHC, which is part of the WHO Millennium Goals 2015 and the UN Sustainable Development Goals 2030. To realize those international agreed goals, it is required and part of the registration standard that the residential address plus the GPS data are recorded. If there is an employer, then also it is normal to register the address and link with the GPS data of the employer's work location. For pandemic preparedness only some few additional data are required as part of the registration.
It is to ask if there is livestock from farming if there are house pets or if there are known pests in the residential area. From then onwards, animal proximity data are now part of the registration for each individual and links animal populations to GPS data. This is a simple exercise. Scenarios for usability of GPS and animal proximity. To give example how the connection with GPS data and animal proximity registration can help to trigger early alerts of accumulation of symptoms three scenarios are presented. In each of the scenario only the automated data analyze on a central server could trigger alert bells on developments that would have been otherwise not observed at an early stage of an epidemic outbreak. First case. Several clients from the same residential area develop symptoms and visit different family doctors. No alert trigger at a single health center. Centralized analyze of symptoms and residential GPS clusters only can trigger alerts. Second case, a farmer has a livestock and has no symptoms because of immunity. All clients from the residential area have no pets or reported pests but live near the farm. Trigger of type of livestock near to a cluster of symptoms would only be triggered from the client register with livestock, pet or pest data. In this case the farmer data who himself was not seeing a doctor. Third case, staff at the farmer's place live at different locations and visits different family doctors with their symptoms. No alert trigger at health facility. No alert from the residential GPS proximity, but alerts from the employer GPS. Finally, the last slide summary is the presented solutions. This is not a trivial topic and not presentable in three minutes. Congratulations if you have made it until here. Each of the presented solutions is working. This is not just an idea what could be, it is a combination of complete and scalable, field-tested solutions, developed by people who spent their entire life inside the health sector. Its potentials go beyond what was presented over the last 27 slides. The scalability of the solution allows to use it as a remarkably simple approach in a remote and poorly equipped primary care health facility like in northern Afghanistan but it is fully scalable to the demands of a huge university hospital in an industrial country. The connection of GPS data and patients' symptoms is not limited to communicable diseases alone. It can also point on patterns of symptoms that result from environmental intoxications. The use of a central cloud server as data backup could be an opportunity for industrial countries to take the role of the custodian as a partner for a developing country to provide the required data protection but also provide ongoing scientific research on the accumulated national data sets to identify accumulations of suspicious symptoms and provide early warnings. It can be also instrumental to plan the location for expensive medical diagnostic equipment to purchase it for locations where it is needed most. It also provides the user-friendly digital platform for international medical online cooperation at highest efficiency. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions do not hesitate to contact us at any time.